Hello, welcome to Pound for Pound, the number one boxing podcast with me, Jeff Wood, and him. It's the Spencer Oliver. Now, do you like the new intro? I love the new intro. It's funny though, because I went to record it a second ago and I fucked it up. <laughs> you went back to the old one. Yeah, the, yeah. the new. The new. Yeah, yeah someone man. tweeted us saying, we're not really new, are we? And, well, we're uh, not really. And we've hit number one spot uh, in the UK, haven't we, quite a few times. Yeah, so I think that's a fair assessment, a fair intro. So that's what we're doing, is it? Yeah, the number what? one boxing podcast. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a, a, an amazing week, didn't we, in terms, yeah. of, uh, in terms of the podcast, in terms of what we're doing. Mm. We hit a magic number. What? Yep, what we hit half a million listeners we've had now since we started, what, eight months ago? Yes. So, um, and last week, by the way, we just went off the scale with the amount of listeners we had. We doubled... Well, Eddie the, Hearn, everyone loves a bit yeah. of Eddie, didn't they? Yeah. Anyone lo- everyone loves a bit of fast car Eddie, and we doubled our figures, flew back up the charts More than again. doubled. More yeah, than more doubled. than doubled. Tripled. Tripled. Mm. So, yeah, we're flying. We're, we're now on YouTube as well, which gives us a massive boost. Yes, Coogan's put us on his uh, IFL TV uh, YouTube channel, uh, mm-hmm. which is also on Twitter. And that's brought loads of uh, listeners in. I think we yeah. had 20, within about a day and a half, we had about like 25,000 hits yeah, or something. it's incredible. Um, so, listen, that a, a massive, well, all of that, thanks, goes to you guys for listening yeah. and for spreading the word and for, and for supporting us. I know that there's guys out there that have listened from the very very beginning um so thank you yeah mm. thanks for listening we appreciate the support we try and give you the best show we can every week yeah um yeah we really give it a lot of thought in terms of the guests and what we're doing we really love what we're doing don't we mm. and hopefully that just comes across that's the feedback we get anyway that yeah. you know that we enjoy what we do and uh and hopefully that rubs off and, and you guys enjoy it too so yeah it's all a little bit of light-hearted fun we like to have a little laugh in this studio as well don't we, well, I, think we I think we're achieving Listen, what we set out to achieve i've got another stat as well go on <laughs> that i worked out go on and i fuck it I, was, I spoke to Alison about it yeah right now so this is show number 39 yeah right so say from last week when i was working out i was only like 38 yeah right 38 shows yeah right so each one probably takes what two hours, at least two hours to record and at it? least put together, right? Yeah. So that's seventy six hours, right? Right. Yeah. That's three days and three nights, right? We've, We've spent, spent this, this little box. box. <laughs> three days and three nights. That's incredible, isn't it? The but stats. I know. I know. But then I said, well, we must get on. Me and you must get on because yeah. there's not many people I could do that with, mate. Nah, so. no, nah, I think I think we've cracked it. Three days and three that's nights. That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Box. Amazing, amazing stats, but it's true though, yeah. Yeah. But we've and probably had, more. Probably yeah. because it's probably two and a half hours, three hours. Well, when we started off, we was doing like seven hours. We <laughs> 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 was going for it, weren't we? We was going for it. But um, what have you been up to this week? Your week been good? Yeah, I've been all right. I've been uh I've been away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you went Co- to Italy? Yes, a couple of yeah. days away with nice. uh, really good friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. Just what I needed. Sort of uh, getting the last bit of summer yeah uh and then yeah but mind you i was still in touch with you all week yeah of course because <laughs> we are doing our boxing with a um, style show which is coming up friday october the 12th now you know a couple of weeks ago we was thinking whoa this is going to be a difficult ask this putting this together is starting to become difficult we weren't really getting people coming forward mm. then we got dean ralph come forward who's in towie at the moment he's boxing be- um ben Jardine. Jardine. Who's just come out of the Big Brother house. who so, had all of that stuff with uh, Roxanne, didn't he? Yeah. So he's probably a bit pissed off. He's got a bit of aggression. He wants to get out. Yep. Yeah, so that fight got made and he's like, brilliant. <clears throat> that's good. Then we got the call from Johnny Nelson. So Johnny Nelson's on. Now, here's the story about Johnny Nelson. So we've been advertising that Johnny Nelson is boxing on our show. He's actually doing an exhibition on our show. And this is the twist, guys, that the exhibition is going to be against one of you guys. Now, how that works is... It is going out to the highest bidder. So if you're a boxing fan and you want to have a little move around with your boxing hero, Johnny Nelson. Unbelievable. Yeah, this is your big opportunity. And the way that you do it is you can DM us on Twitter um, and just put in your price, what you what your value is. By the way, we've had a good bid. Um, it's gone into four figures, mm-hmm. which is quite nice. It's good. Uh, it's a good start. It's all for, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's all yeah, in aid of uh, teens, teens Unite. Teens Unite. Uh, which is a fantastic charity that looks after kids, uh, teenage children with, with cancer. Yep. So you can DM us on Twitter, Boxing With The Stars, or you can send us an email, boxingwiththestars at outlook.com, and... Email us your price, your bid, and um, yeah, and and it goes out to the highest bid. It doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. Um, 
because you're just going to have a fun with a former undefeated for 10 years world champion. What an opportunity. Johnny Nelson. And it's a massive opportunity. Um, Sky's Adam Smith and myself will be there commentating on the fight with Jake as well, um, doing better, some co coms. I mean, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an amazing opportunity. Yeah, isn't it? it is. It's, a, it's an amazing opportunity. And we've got some other big names being released as well. Um, on the show this, I think it's all coming together yeah. I'm looking forward to the night mm. this, I think it's our fourth event isn't it um, yeah fourth, fourth or fifth one I think yeah it? and uh, ah, feedback on it's them good is always fun. amazing isn't it it's and good they're, they're fun just, it is just great night and we've got a pound for pound title on the line a pound for pound podcast title now Wayne Fuller is boxing a Magic Mike Dacey. Now, they are two of the fans that were listening <laughs> that wanted to box on the show yes. so they emailed in <laughs> and lo and behold, they were the same fucking weight. They were like both 73 Fantastic. or 75 kilos. So the mount, the bout has been made. So it is our first pound for pound podcast boxing title. Listen, we'll, what get an, we'll get a nice belt made up or yeah. something, or a trophy, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be good. Just going back to what Spencer was saying there about getting in touch with us, there's also, we've also got a Twitter account for the pound for pound. It's at pound podcast. Uh, so yeah, just get in touch with us on any of those social media platforms. Uh, regarding Johnny or if you want tickets for the show Boxing with the Stars at Outlook.com Royal Lancaster Hotel Friday uh, October the 12th it's guaranteed to be a great night yeah brilliant cool so, so let's get on to our guest this week yeah so we have got an amazing guest this week um, Mr. Darren Barker so for those of you some of you may know Darren's story um, if you don't you're going to be just blown away by it. I mean, the guy has had some real highs and he's had some real lows. Um, he talked about walking away from the sport. He went on to win a world title. It's just an incredible story. And now he's going from strength to strength. Um, lovely, general, all-round guy, Darren, isn't he? Yeah, and he's just got a new deal uh, with Matram, isn't he? They're doing these yeah. sort of online shows, uh, I think, during the weigh-in and then just before mm. just before the fight, stuff like that. I think that's all online, isn't it, with Sky and yeah. stuff like that. So. Uh, we'll ask him about that. Uh, yeah, just an amazing career. I was always a, a massive fan of Darren Barker. He's mm. Commonwealth, British, European, and world title holder. He's done everything there is to, to do in the sport. Mm. And uh, and yeah, and I think it's interesting. Uh, you know, I know a little bit about the story in terms of what drove him on and what sort of really got him to where he where he uh, where he ended up. But but we'll ask him all about that. Anyway, yeah. So we'll yeah. find out. Let's do it. Should we get him on? Let's do it. Darren, how are you, mate? Yeah, not bad, mate. I'm all right. Are you, in there? are you sleeping much at the moment? <laughs> you know what? The baby's unbelievable, mate. I tell you. What, she's she sleeping through, is she? Mate, she don't cry. She's done wrong. Wow. Really? Not like you, then. Well. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely, mate. Well, congratulations. So, uh, what's, Darren, what's the name, Darren? Po Poppy Barker, isn't it? Poppy. Yeah, congratulations, Poppy mate. Nice one. Yeah, nice one. So, so I've got to just say quickly, Darren, as well, I don't know uh, how many people saw this or follow you on Twitter. Listen, what? when, when um, your Mrs. Beth was giving birth, you get you put a tweet out, didn't you? There's, there's a picture of a photo, basically, you sitting there happily. <laughs> Beth bent over the birthing pool <laughs> with your mum. Oh, is that I, your mum? Oh, yeah, and then, mom, you, yeah. and then you wrote, they say being in labour is tough. I'm not sure what all the fuss is about. And you've got a big <laughs> smile in your face. Did you get... <laughs> That's exactly what I was trying to point out. It's not as bad as they make out. <laughs> <laughs> is she speaking to you yet? Yeah, she's in the other room as it happened. <laughs> oh, bless. But uh, no, yeah, it was, uh, I was blinded. I, honestly, it was unbelievable. She was in and out in about five hours. It was uh, oh, brilliant. amazing. Pop, Poppy's unreal. She's, she's lovely. Oh, but, lovely. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had to take the opportunity to... Uh, to take that selfie. She was, she was actually pushing at that point as well. So, listen, any, anyone that knows Darren Barker, that's a typical Barker thing to do, if I'm honest. And, <laughs> what are you talking about? How, how nice was that, though? Your mum's, your mum's a midwife, isn't she? And, and she delivered yeah. the baby. That's beautiful. Oh, is she? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. She's like, yeah, she's like an assistant. So she was there just helping out, holding Beth's hand while I was, while I was setting photos. Wow, <laughs> chilling out. You should have had a cigar on the go as well. That would have been. That would yeah, we well, yeah, didn't want to get it in the. I didn't want to get it in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. listen, mate. You was um you was at the fight on Saturday night. Before yeah. we talk about the fight or anything, um, let's talk about this new deal that you've got with Matram. So, um, it's on Dizan. It's a little. It, well, it's you know what it is. Spent it's on all on all um. Uh, maximum social media channels including that and it, and, it, and basically it's just it's just great content do you know what I mean for, yeah. for the fans it's just it gives the Eddie and Maxim another another opportunity just to to give the fans 
uh, access. You know, you've got mm. it with IFL TV, and you know, it's just so much for the fans now to get involved. Mm. You know what I mean? So if we do, we do one before or during, sorry, during the press conference, and it's called um, the last word. Yeah. So we get in as they come off the stage, we get them over, blah blah blah, and it's just good to you know see how they you know how they're feeling and how they're approaching the fight and blah blah. And then um, the the weigh-in is uh, off the scales. Eddie mm-hmm. come up with that one. He, he's very proud of that name, off the scales. <laughs> right. Off the scales. He's yeah. got him pretty got proper keno about it. <laughs> uh, and uh, the last one is before the bell, and it's just like a before the bell. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, an hour long thing where you just sort of we, we break down the fight. We got the different uh, different guests come on, and so it's just it's just great for the. For the fans and you know the people that love boxing, just to tune in to something free, and um, you know, it just gives them more. There's more content more around content. the show. It just it just builds it a bit more. Yeah, you know? I think that's genius, mate. If I'm honest, because social media is such a big thing, plays oh, such yeah. a big part in everything now. Doesn't it? I mean, fights now, are even made boxing the whole yeah. way through now, doesn't it? It's uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's you know what it's done. It's, it's it, even Eddie says now he goes boxing now because like, even when I was fighting. Like, I mean, I checked him five years ago. He's going, like, now nah, the money you get for a British title, European title, he goes, you know, it's, it's, it's different. Mm-hmm. It's a different league. It's almost like that, um, you know, like the football the football boom. You know, like the, the players that were the representing Chelsea, Arsenal, blah, 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 and all of a sudden this big boom coming, didn't it? Everyone mm-hmm. started earning like 50, 60, 70, 80 grand. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a bit like that now, you know, and I think social media is going to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's funny that same um, with that football thing as well. You got a whole generation of footballers who just missed the boat, didn't they? Like they were making uh, good money, uh, but like if yeah, even if they were play, playing like a couple of years after, then they would have made silly money, wouldn't they? I've, yeah, I've, like myself. No, I mean if I was twelve now, I'd have made millions playing football. Would, would I? Mm. Would I? Um, would I? Would, <laughs> I, I listen. Would I fall into? You got two bro- left feet. I'll I tell you what. If you had, if you had, two, if you had two heads for uh, two heads. For Feet, you'll be no, I was going to say, did I fall into that just missed the boat bracket uh, that I retired 20 years ago? Does that count? Oh, I don't know. What did you get? You got about a score for that some area. <laughs> <laughs> Six shillings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half a crown. <laughs> <laughs> um, and listen, Darren, where can people find that then? The uh, the before the bell and all so, that after the bell? Your best bet is you, you, if you're on Facebook, you can get it mm. on there or YouTube or Twitter. Uh, I'm not sure about Instagram, so it's all online. Yeah, you know what I mean, so you get online and, and and it's all there. It's all um, it's all available, uh, all available. It's all free. So you, you're, it's, you're, yeah, doing like that, you're doing that week in week out. Yeah, all the, all yeah, the, all so the fights. Like Sixteen to eighteen shows. A season. Wow. So Fantastic. We've got Wembley Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, you know, like I say, the press conference at one end and the fight. Then there's the what's his face. Um, We've got Newcastle, Ritson. Ritson, yeah. Then, yeah, there's, there's a few coming up in, uh, you know, before the years oh, out. that's nice, it, man. You know, it, like, we're the mecca of boxing now, aren't we? Let's, be, let's, mm. let's get it straight. You know, we've got, there's some big names over the pond, but I just think the big show here, like, the Wembley Stadium is unbelievable. Yeah. Like, 90,000. I think they're talking about 100,000 in April. I mean, this is where boxing is now. It's not, it's not just Wembley Stadium either, is it? It's like they're hitting all the stadiums now, yeah. and I think the shows are just ah, getting bigger yeah. and bigger. I think that... That's due to, you know, um, I think that's a lot down to social media and the, uh, the publicity that so. boxing gets now and the world champions we've got. Just flying at the moment. It's um, it's all good. And it helps having the, <laughs> the heavyweight champion of the world, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, th- th- that, that helps slightly, doesn't it? Yeah, he's... Uh, he's uh, <laughs> I just want to see him. But I, I, honestly, I know we'll probably talk about it, but I just, just want to see him in with Fury and Wilder. Mm. Mm. How, how, do you think he'll get on, how do you think he'll get on against uh, Povetkin, though? Um, Darren, so what? Like, he's no mug. You got to remember, right? He, it, this fight, uh, is, I don't think it's a fight they they necessarily wanted. They, you know, they want Wilder. You want the Fury, right? You know, I think there'll be no secrets about that. Povetkin is anti Joshua's mandatory. He has to fight him. If he if he don't fight him, he gets stripped. And you know, there's a big thing at the minute, and, and I like it. It's you know about getting all the belts. You know, they want all the belts. Mm-hmm. And if he don't, if he if he don't fight Povetkin, he loses the belt. So it's a fight that you know. They, I, I, if I'm honest, they probably don't want. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think he, it's a dangerous he, fight. Yeah, um, honestly, Ben, he's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like you've seen him, cool, yeah. we all have. Well, the boxing fans have. You know, he can whack, and he's got that pedigree. I he's, mean, he's durable at all. He can take he's a durable. shot. Well, we see him against Price. You yeah. know, Tony Bellew and loads in the game. Renowned. Uh, uh, they say David Price is one of the biggest punchers, if not the biggest. Yeah, he, took, took, he took it, didn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah, he, you know, and he took the shot, and, you know, unfortunately, David Price got knocked out. Mm. I'll tell you one thing, though. I do hope Anthony Joshua knocks his spark out because I'm not a fan of the, you know, the drug cheats. Do you know what I mean? That's again, quite yeah. I don't know how many times he's been caught, but. Well, he got, he got uh, done twice in a year, didn't he? And, uh, I think twice in a year, you know, I have been not sure. To me, mate, I don't know. What, don't know how strongly you, well, you obviously do feel strongly about it. And I know a lot mm. of others do. Tony Bellew's one as well. But to me, if you get caught once, you should be getting a big ban. If you get caught big twice, ban, yeah. you should be you should be slung out, done. No, oh, you should never be allowed box again. And some, and some. Do you know yeah. what I mean? There should be a lot of. Like, I don't know. Like, I think um, the whole bill should get involved because ultimately, ultimately, it's not like you could run a run for mm. a jump player. You could punch harder. You could hurt someone mm. worse. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, yeah, we know we've had there. Tony Belly on here saying the same. We've had Billy Joe Saunders on here saying the same. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think we're all. I think we're all in the same boat. Mm. You know. You know. Cause we, at the end of the day, boxing's boxing is made up of proper people. You know, good people. Mm. And uh, there's a few bad eggs, and we need to get them out. Yeah, I totally agree, mate. Totally agree. But listen, Dale, let's go back to the beginning, mate. Just go give on, the mate. give the people um, a little rundown of your career. Um, where it all started and stuff. So you won a Commonwealth Games. Basically, you was my you was my hero, Spence. I know that. <laughs> I was, I, I, don't don't jump the gun. I wanted to I wanted to get to that. Anyway, you want to get I, wanted, up to that? I didn't want I didn't want to talk about you coming in and holding my belt when you was just a little kid. There we go. I, I didn't want to talk about that. Like you snuck, oh, yeah, he snuck told me that before. He snuck yeah, into yeah. my dressing room, the mm. little rat. He t- come into Whoa. my dressing room, pick the belt up. <laughs> uh, I was over there, but, but but on that note, though, I. Uh, this is this is you know this is honest truth. I always wanted to win a Southern Area title mm. from that moment. You know, it meant a, it meant a big deal to me. You know, I was a kid. Went in the dressing room. Spencer was cups of shreds. <laughs> there was claret everywhere. And I thought, you know what? I was I was holding this belt, and I thought, I want one of these. You know what I mean, I want one of these. <laughs> and it always, it all, you know, it's a prestigious belt. This the, yeah, it the was. Southern Area. It was. It, you know, when I won that, it was like, wow, I made my mark on the, you know. I've been able to emulate what Spencer's done. Do you, I've sort of uh, I made my mark on the pro game. Do you know? Do you know the mad thing, Dale? When you win that, which is Southern Area, which is now just like a bit. When you look back mm. on it, it's just a stepping stone. But when you actually win that, you think to yourself, "I've won a belt now, so nothing. Everything yeah, else yeah. is a bonus mm. because I'm oh, now I, I'm now I've achieved it, right? Not knowing you're going to win, win Europeans and British and World Crazy. titles and that. You just got that belt and you think. Fucking hell, yeah, I've done that's it, it now. Done that's it. it. I've but done like it. Say there, like, at yeah. that point, there, Spen, like me and. You, like for both of us, we we we've done something as a yeah. pro. Whatever anyone says, you you you're in the record books, right? Yeah. It might only be the Southern Area record books, but you, your name is there forever. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it was a big thing for me that, and obviously looking further in your career, like it was the first time I ever done ten rounds. So it, you know it was valuable. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, mate. I, I, I had exactly the same feeling. I thought everything else now is just a bonus. Like all yeah. the pressure felt like it was off my shoulders after that. But, but you... I'll tell you what, though, you know, you talk about the career, but I thought that, like, everything from now, I'm, like, I'm a biggest um, um, critic, and, I, and I, I never really truly believed in myself, I don't think. So, like, when I won my first title, like, as a kid, 17 year, years old, M- NABC, I could have jacked it in then. Mm. Every, everything was a bonus then, because I won a national title. You know, Spen, you won yeah. more than I did, uh, you know, as an amateur, title-wise, and uh, it, they, they, it just meant everything to me. And then you go on to, like, the Commonwealth Games, like you say, and it's just like... It, it was crazy. I just kept pinching myself, thinking, you know, this, yeah. this would eventually end. But, you know, the, the world title was, was my wildest dream, mate. Yeah, it was, a, it was an unbelievable achievement, mate. But listen, you nearly never got to the world title, did you? I was telling Jake about this before we was doing it. But you turned pro in 2004. 2006, mm. unfortunately, we lost a very special person, your brother, yeah, Ga- yeah. Gary Barker, which was, was, was absolutely tragic. The kid was going to be an mm. unbelievable boxer. He was only 19 years of age, and it was, it was a devastating loss. But... You that nearly quit. You nearly quit through that, Darren, didn't you? Well, I remember oh, talking 100%. to you about it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, I was not in a good place. You know, you know, as well as anyone, it was a um, mm. bad, bad time. You know, for me and my family, and it wasn't even a case of oh, I'm not going to box anymore. Like I just didn't give. You know, mm. um, I just didn't care about it. You know, I just, it just it wasn't in my thoughts. You know, it was just I've lost my brother. You know, what am I going to do? And, mm. Sorry, uh, Darren. How, how many years uh, are there or were there between you? Uh, there was only six uh, six years between us. You, you were younger, yeah, six years younger. Yeah, no, no, I was. I'm oh. the, I'm the eldest. Oh, you're, you're the eldest. Sorry, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, you know, it was. Because um, he was like your training partner and everything, wasn't he? It was like fucking people that don't obviously know you or yourself or your family. I mean, probably one of the cl- most close knit families I think I've ever come across, and still to this day. 
Um, and I know how difficult that was for you. And um, yeah, I remember you saying to me that you was, you was looking at getting a painting, decorating job or saying you was going to yeah. walk away from the sport. Yeah, and that was one of the reasons, because we did it together, like, you know, it's been like, it's so, boxing's so lonely, it's a very lonely sport, you're an individual, but for me, I had my brother with me, do you know what I mean? It was like, they, we were a team, so we went to the Repture and the blah, 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 and, you know, even when I turned pro, Gary would come down and do a bit for Tony Sims, and, you know, it was just, I had someone there, you know, when you're down, I had someone to talk about, and it was just, you know, it was almost my partner in crime, you know, it was Batman and Robin, mm. you know, he was just, he was he was with me, and uh, I just couldn't really face doing it on my own, and, I remember going back to the gym uh, a few months after and I remember doing the pads with Tony and I just burst it out. I just started bursting out crying and I, like, I was just, this is it. You know, I'm never going to fight again. I can't do it. You know, every time I went to the pads, I was just thinking of him. You know, I was just thinking, of, you know, thinking of my blah, 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 blah. And I just thought, ah, the same for me, this. I just, I'll, I'll have to do something else because it's just too raw. And um, as, as sort of time went on, I ended up, like, Tony... I don't know if you know Bryn, um, a friend of Tony's, um, spent. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, I met him down there yeah, a few times, yeah. Yeah, like, really nice bloke. And he sort of said to Tony, like, I'm, uh, I see this bloke now and again, you know, like he, he's a sort of a, I wouldn't say a therapist or anything like that. That seems a bit strong, but it's just someone where he could go and he sort of to help me, um, I don't know, clear the wound, if you like, he would call it. So I went to see the bloke and he just, he just got me back on track, really. He just sort of helped me understand things. He cleared the wound. And I remember just thinking one day, there's a, there's a massive void missing in my life. And, you know, uh, I just thought to myself, look, if I can't do it with my brother, I'll do it for him. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just, from that moment, thought I'd dedicate every win to him, every title to him. And, you know, um, that's, that's, that's what I've done. And ultimately, I think when I look back, um, at my career that's what I'm most proud about that I was able to do it for him mm. you know it's, ama- it's an amazing story you went on to win British Commonwealth European titles but then you had that big night in Atlantic City mm. um, where you won the world title against Daniel Gill I mean talk us through that fight mate because that was the, the story you've got is unbelievable so to explain the fight, you was it, it was a tough fight. It was a really close fight. Yeah. I was in the studio mm. commentating at the time. Yeah, and there was, was in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I thought, wow, this is really tough. They got into what round was it? He put you over in six. I was down in the yeah. Six. So he went but down. I what, we we but, rewind a little bit before then, even a year. Like again, I was close to to jacking it in twice. I had two op- operations after my brother mm. um, that stopped me for training. The, the second one, I was out the ring for fourteen months. I just thought, ah. Oh, <laughs> I don't need this. It's just like, it's just hard work. You know, my body's breaking down. I'm just like, then I've had, like, I had numerous cortisone injections in my elbows. You know, it's just like years and years of boxing. And then um, I remember I, I was top of the bill at uh, Wembley Arena. I was fighting, who I ended up fighting eventually, uh, uh, Simeone, Simeone Rotolo, like, uh, uh, you know, a decent uh, Italian, but it was, a uh, you know, a stepping stone. I was very close to to, to the end getting a world title shot. And I remember, I did rupture my bicep, but I, I tore some muscles in it and I had to pull out the fight. And again, I jacked it in. I thought, I, I, like I said to myself, I'm never going to fight again. This is it. I'm, I'm not doing it. And again, I what, thought... Why uh, is that, Darren? Because well, the, the body was breaking down, you felt? The body was breaking down. I was too dodgy. The, the operations, was, you know, uh, were brilliant when they first happened. But then I started feeling them again. And, uh, you know, I started doing yoga and swimming. And, yeah. And then this bicep happened and I just thought, oh, I can't, like... Honestly, I'd had enough. I just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. And you got to remember, it was, the only thing that kept me going was my brother. Really, you know, like, come on, you're so close, you're so close. And then, so, so yeah, was that the goal then, Darren? At that point, you wanted, you wanted to win that world title, did you? I just, you know what? I just, I wanted another crack. I lost to Martinez, and sort of stock went up a bit in America. And mm. uh, I knew, I, I think, I still think now. Like, don't get me wrong, he's a great man. He's a future Hall of Famer. But I just think, I believed in myself a bit more on that night I think I might I, I could have pushed him a bit harder so I kept thinking about it thinking well look if I've taken him to 11 rounds and I feel like I could, do, I could have done better being the you know self-critic I am I, I can I reckon I can win one mm. you're right well, if it have been well, I would have knocked Sparrow well, no, I've got to say mate <laughs> against Martinez who was one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world at the time mm, yeah. you had him you had him in a lot of trouble in them first few rounds if I'm honest I think yeah, you, about got, six rounds yeah, it was, yeah there weren't much in it there was nothing in it at all the plan was to frustrate him and get the crowd against him because I, you know, I was just this Brit who no one, who no one, no one knew about. Do you know what I mean? But I, um, 
Yeah, so I just I got a bit more belief in myself from that moment onwards, and then I just thought that I had the bicep injury. I sat down with Tony. Tony said, "Come on, down, just give it one more last push." Actually, I think it was, I said to him, "I went, look, Tony, this is it now. I'm, this is it. This is you know, it's, it ain't going to happen again." So, and I think that showed in my performances. I fought Kerry over, I fought uh, Rotolo eventually, and I, I got them both out there in four rounds because I just thought I'm not having no nonsense now. Let's just go for it. Do and you the fight got made against Bill. Do you, do you think if you'd lost to Rotolo, um, Darren, you would have you would have retired? Do you think? Yeah, I was always one loss away. Uh, yeah, I was always one loss away. I was just, you know, that that was it for me. I was like, right, this is one last go. You know, any more injuries? If I was to have lost, that was it for me. And then I was fortunate enough. I, I beat Rotolo, or I hope I can't remember what it was, but I won the Intercontinental. You know, it was one of them moody titles. But what them titles do is they get you in the top, whatever it was, top mm. ten, top fifteen. That allowed me to become a voluntary for Gill because there was like a trilogy going on, like, I don't know, cricket or rugby or whatever, England, Australia. The fight made sense. And mm. yeah, I got the nod and that was it. Wow. Yeah, so talk us through the fight anyway. Like I said, you was over in the sixth round. Yeah. You went down with a body shot that a lot of people remember. I've seen people yeah. tweeting about it even today. How the fuck did you get up from that? I'm glad you're swearing because like a couple of times I was going to swear and I thought, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what the score is of swearing. Do it your way, you fucking well. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what? It was, you know, like, you can, uh, but, like, sometimes I feel like people think I'm making it up, but, you know, that that nine and a half seconds, whatever it was, was the, the longest period I can, I ever remember being conscious for. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because you know, I was down there and it was like my life back of me. It was crazy, you know, my brother telling me to get up, you know, visions of him and it was just, it, it was it was very surreal and, you know, you see, you know when you see these mad scenes in films and that? Yeah, I was going to say a real Rocky, like, Rocky movie yeah, moment, yeah. But you think it's too, too fake. You know, like, it was a little bit like that and I just remember getting up and one of the things was, right, I just want to get up. If he waves it off, at least I've proved to myself I'm tough and I can, you know, I've got up. Do you know what I mean? That was the first thing. Let's just get up. Get up. I was like, so, when, I mean? so, so when he said box again, you thought, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, I was still winded. Yeah, yeah, I did. And then I was still winded for about a minute after. And he's trying to weather the storm and he was so close to jumping in the ref. And then mm. I just thought, well, I've hit rock bottom here. I might as well give it, give it some back. And yeah, you know, it was a, a crazy round, but it, sort of, it was a wake up for me as far as the fight goes. I thought, look, well, stick to your boxing now, but I didn't. I ended up just getting stuck in, but yeah, it was an amazing fight. Mm. Like again, I like I can't really believe that was me in there. Whenever I see clips, because it was like I was a man possessed. Yeah, you was. Um, you definitely boxed out of character that night. You 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 bit on your gum shield, mate, and pulled pulled yourself through and, and proved a lot of doubt was wrong. You went and won the world title. It's probably one of Eddie Hearn's greatest moments. You was Eddie's first yeah. first signing, yeah. weren't you? And I remember seeing Eddie jumping around and crying like a little baby when you when you won that title. Yeah, it was incredible. It was a good night, you know. And I remember, uh, I remember afterwards, Dan started to basically do the press conference, blah blah blah. Then after the press conference, I'm not, not a lot of people know this. I, I then have to give Gill's belt back, so I give his belt back, and then I get a, a brand new one ordered in like a couple of weeks after, which was was a special moment going to the match and picking it up. But after the press conference, we. Um, we all went for a few beers after, like, I, I was wiped out, so I couldn't stay out that long. But I must have turned it in about four o'clock, which weren't that late, considering I didn't get out of the press conference or whatever time. Yeah. And I remember getting up in the morning, and, and, I, and I remember think, uh, going downstairs thinking, well, one, I'm not aching that much. This is, this is a bit of a touch. But there was a big, we were all going to New York and then um, going home. And I remember it was a big search party going on. Because uh, we couldn't find my granddad. My granddad had gone missing. <laughs> right? Honestly, you know, it was like it was quite a serious thing at the time. I was like, where, where's he gone? Where the fuck is he gone? Couldn't he find be, him anywhere. Um, can, I just, right? can I just say, Darren's granddad is the biggest party animal you've oh, yeah. ever met. He's unbelievable. <laughs> Rodney, he's unbelievable, yeah, he's mate. Yeah, so go on, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, he's, he's a legend. My granddad, honestly, he's like when they say young art, oh, he, he fits that bill. Yeah, uh, we, we couldn't find him. Like, where, where is he? Anyway, right, there's a big search party over there. Anyway, we found him in it was like an outdoor bit of the hotel. So people are leaving the hotel trying to find a bit. It, it was this outdoor little terrace, and he crashed out <laughs> uh, 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 on a on, on a chair, fully suited, right? <laughs> and he woke up and he was still 
still after this. And he started like coping us all off, saying, oh, I can't believe you got left me. My <laughs> grandson's just won a world title. None of you would have stayed out for me. <laughs> oh, honestly, it was so funny. But on that waking up the next day, I woke up the next day in New York, and I swear on my life, it's like I've been run over by a bus. Yeah. I was in absolute agony. Uh, it's an amazing achievement, mate. And uh, it was a memorable one for, for everyone. I remember was texting your mum at the time when I was sitting in the studio. You was like, it was just like one of those yeah. like mad, mad moments. And um, yeah, it was just, yeah, well, memorable, nice, memorable night. Like, we're from the same world, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We've known each other since we were kids. Yeah. You know? but, like, for those who don't know the world, like uh, Spencer's dad trained me, his uncle trained me at Finchley. It was like, you know, we've known each other for years, so yeah. we've always been sport. I, I remember when you when you uh, was in the final of the Commonwealth Games, the big street party you had. That's right. That from, mm. Where was it? Canada. Canada, yeah. yeah. Canada, the big street party you had. And um, what's the name of the road again? Brent, Brent Place. Place, yeah. Brent Place, yeah. Crazy you know, times, like, wasn't it? Yeah, crazy. You used to work on a flower stall with my mum. It's like <laughs> I did. crazy. I did. I used to work on a flower stall with yeah. my, my, my trainer's flower stall with Darren's mum. Nice. Again, it goes back like the, right. honestly, the history is just like nuts. It's nuts. Do you remember much about flowers? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what do you want to know about chrysanthemums? What do you want to know yeah, about lilies? What, what do you tell me? My daughter's called Poppy well, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Poppy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that much about flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's brilliant, mate. Um, so, listen, Darren, all of a sudden, say so you find yourself the IBF uh, world middleweight, middleweight champion in the world. Did, did you feel like um, a world champion? Very surreal, mate, honestly, because it was, like I said, it was my wildest dream. You know, it was, like, uh, crazy. I remember coming back two days after. I'm I'm, I'm walking on uh, the pitch at Stamford Bridge. Mm. You know, I'm a Chelsea fan. You know, I, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I still pinched myself. <laughs> I remember I did a thing the first, uh, I can't remember, it was like, Lily Whites, Piccadilly. I remember being at the top of Piccadilly, mm. uh, this Lily Whites, overlooking it thinking flipping it you know what I mean I'm like middleweight champion of the world like, I just couldn't believe it and I still mm. I don't think it will ever sink in you know but I'm like I say I'm just proud that I um, was able to do it for my brother but yeah it was I don't get me wrong like, the, 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 the weeks and months after were nice but then then fights were being made fights were being talked of and I, 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 if I'm dead honest I didn't want to do it anymore mm. I don't know like, like, I, I've done what I'd set out to do I've I, you know, I became content as a fighter. Then um, the stern fight was made, and don't get me wrong, I, you know, I, I fancied the job, but my body was packing up again, and yeah, I where, just like... It, where were you injury-wise going, going into the stern fight? I mean, what, what, was, that, what was that camp like, Darren, going into going into that first defence? Um, I mean, it started off well. I got back in, you know, it was my shoulder, you know, my head up, my shoulders back, I was world champion, you know, full of confidence. Um, but it was, I, I was like a, a ticking time bomb, basically, you know, mm. Things were things were breaking down. It could have it could have happened before the guild fight. I'm just thankful it never. Mm. But I, I, I remember being in the ring uh, sparring, and the game plan was very simple against. Uh, you sort of imagine a ring within a ring, and don't get backed up on the ropes. Be busy on my jab, quick feet, lovely move around. You know, sort of move rings around him mm. pretty, you know quick hands up and I mean, down he's, down, he's blah, blah, blah. solid stir many but he's pretty straightforward isn't he really? yeah exactly I mean if you, if you can go through the gears and pick him off with a jab you know you should be out in the grounds with him mm. and uh, that was the plan I remember me going in sparring uh, and therefore all the rounds after because I, I was petrified of telling Tony that my hip had gone because the money I was getting and the fact that I believed I could beat Stern was mm. enough to, for me to keep quiet and I just thought I could do it mm. anyway I remember I remember Standing in the centre of the ring, just having a war, having wars with my sparring partners. Tony will go back. Oh, what are you doing, Dale? Practice the game plan. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? This will happen round after round, day after day. Eventually, Tony pulled me aside. I went, Dale, what, what's the score, mate? Because you know, I know you've got a brilliant boxing brain. I know you can uh, adopt this game plan. Why aren't you doing it? What's going on? So I had to tell Tony, and you know, we, we monitored it. We didn't. We you know we wasn't calling any fans or nothing because I truly believed I was fit enough and I could do it. Look, put the injury aside, the best man won on the night. Stone was hungry. He wanted to win the title. You know, I, I never watched it until probably a couple of years ago. Mm. And uh, I was proud of myself, you know. I was proud that I was the last man for yeah. shots. I was proud that, you know, again, I proved that, uh, you know, I, I was, I guess, I guess you could say, a warrior. You know, I never backed away from a, from anything. I fought Martinez, Gil, you know, I've, I've got in there with everyone. Mm. I was offered the Golovkin fight and, I, and I, I said I'll take the fight but Tony, thankfully, said no. 
I remember t- that, I actually shook Tony's hand after the uh, <laughs> after I retired. I said, Tony, I've got to thank you for everything you've done for me, and I'm also going to shake your hand for not letting me fight Golovkin. Wow, that was after yeah. the Stern fight, was it, Darren? Well, yeah, well, the weeks after, like, we had a right. we had a really nice moment after the Stern thing. It was just sort of mm-hmm. uh, Eddie would tell the story, and I, I don't know if he has, but basically there was a moment we went back to the hotel. With the, um, I'm on crutches, um, big ice packs on my hips, and. Uh, I remember my mum looking at me and I remember I just took a sip of beer and she went, I put the beer down and she went, it's all over now, you ain't got to do it no more. And it was just like a lovely moment, you know, yeah, like, everyone, everyone, you know, I, I, though I was you know, on crutches, I still had my health intact, but, you know, I'd, I'd achieved my goal and it was like, uh, you know, move on to the next chapter now. And that's why I found the most content boxer out there because retired boxer because job done, you know, job mm. done. Yeah, you achieved everything you set out to achieve. And against yeah. the Stan fight, you know, you knew you was injured going in, but you rolled the dice straight away, mate, and you give it a go and you can't ask for no more than that. It wasn't like you'd gone in there and conned anyone and anyone. I thought it was yeah. it was you just you boxed different tactically and that's why the fight for me ended the way that it did. But I just thought, you know, proud of you of what you've achieved in your career, oh, mate. Yeah. And and what you've been through as well to stick to achieve your goals. It's just a phenomenal feat, mate. It was brilliant. Yeah, top man, I appreciate it. It's been I mean, you know, though you're my mate. I'm not going to get too soppy, but it means a lot coming from there. <laughs> Trying to get the tears out of you. That's all I'm doing. Ah, stop that. You <laughs> made me cry a few times. Just looking at you. <laughs> right, listen. <laughs> on. There's one thing I wanted to talk about, which a lot of people wished happened but never did. There was there was some good middleweights around at the time mm. in Britain. Andy Lee was one. Martin Murray was another one. Um, mm. These fights never come off, did they? Uh, do you wish they did? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I mean, I do. I was slated to fight Maxim, uh, Matthew Maxim twice. Uh, I think I got injured and he got another. Uh, he got a, a European shot, so that's a relinquish. And they, they just didn't happen. But do you know what? When I when I look when I look back, do I wish I had a big domestic dust dust up? Yeah, I do. Like, I, I would have loved, to, especially like now. You know, they, they're great, and they are. You know, for instance, the Khan Brook. I hope that happens. You know, the, the big domestic fights are brilliant. So I wish I did have one, but. Do I regret it? No, I don't. I don't regret not having them. Because, look, yeah. we're all on a journey. We're all on our separate journeys. It's an individual sport. And if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. But it just, it just wasn't. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, so I, I don't regret it. You know, it, I, I, I wish him all, you know, all the best. I, I see Matthew at, at Birmingham. I see him quite often. He's a lovely bloke. I, I really like him. As I do Andy Lee and Martin Murray. They're all top blokes. Um, I wish Martin Murray all the best. I hope he goes on and you know, can fulfil his dream of, of winning a world title like myself and Andy was able to. And even Billy Joe Saunders, you know, he was a little bit behind us, but he, he's doing tremendous, isn't he? You know, like, I mean, you know, he's a bit like Marmite, Billy Joe Saunders. You either love him or you hate him, but he, he's a fantastic fighter. And um, yeah, it's great. You know, it's been great to be a, been part of a good division. Yeah, he was a, and, look, and you've all done so well, which is quite rare. When you when you have yeah. these where you've got three or four fighters in the same division and you're all around and the fights don't happen for whatever reason, like normally a couple of them don't quite make it, whatever, but every one of you guys seem to have hit right top level, like world class level, winning world titles, boxing for world titles. So I think what? it was, it was so a brilliant what? era. Yeah, I think maybe we pushed each other on. You know, mm-hmm. one might one fight and got up the rankings, and the other one was like, "No, stop that! I want to get the." And I think subconsciously, maybe we all sort of, you know, strived each other to try, you know, sort of pushed each other on. You know, come on, let's get up there, and maybe these fights can happen. It's a shame it never. But like I said, I don't regret it. But you know, all top blokes. I'm like, no, look, boxing's made up of good people, and uh, and they're 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 examples of them. Mm. Yeah. So career career's over. Um, what, what are you doing with yourself now, Dal? You got, you got uh, your 12 times free gyms? Swerving you. I'm, I'm, I'm swerving Spenny. <laughs> You're swerving me trouble. like the plague, mate. Yeah, all, I know. All trouble, always trouble when I'm in <laughs> the <laughs> Trouble, yeah. We had, we had some laughs, though. We've had some great laughs, mate. We've had some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant times. Plenty more uh, to come, by the way. Yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. of course. I'm dropping you out. <laughs> uh, yeah, so tell uh, us about your 12 times free gyms. Yeah, you opened one. Gym. So what happened was, so basically, after, after I checked in, it was... Um, it was like nice that that uh, discipline uh, had been lifted. Do you know what I mean? I could I could do what I wanted and not worry about the the repercussions or being heavy or being unfit or you know I, I could just do it. And the first year went by so quickly. You know, it really did. And um, after the you know after a little while, similar to when you know I stopped boxing with my brother, it was like there was a void. I had to start doing something. You know, I'm a young man. Well, 
getting, I'm cracking on, but, you know, I was still a young man, and he's like, you got a, you know, I'm from a hard-working family, it's been some those, you know, and mm. I've got a, I have to start getting, you know, doing something again, and uh, my, my good friend from, from Reps and Ryan Pickard, um, uh, we, we sat down, and we had some ideas, and it was, there was a few things knocking about, we, we, we didn't quite understand what we was going to do, but after a little while, 12 Freeze was, was born, and, yeah, it's been it's been great because it, it enables me to stay involved in the fitness side of the sport as mm-hmm. well. You know, obviously I'm doing this thing with Matcham, the other thing with Sky, and you know, bits and pieces done with Spencer. And you know, the, once you're on the circuit, you, you you're busy. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So you're busy talking about boxing and you're busy being involved in it. And it's great. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm still I still like passing on what what little knowledge I do have of boxing to mm-hmm. people who are uh, sort of you know, wanting to do it. And mm. the, the gyms are, are a great place for that. You know, we get all different people down there. We get male, female, doctors, pilots, you know, just so many different people down there. And, you know, they, they whether they want to get fit or they want to learn to box or they want to do a session with me or, or any of the other champions we've got down there. It's great. And, yeah, we've got one in Paddock and one in all day. And that keeps me busy. That really, that does. And it keeps me fit. I think you know, I've managed to keep the weight off just through running around and trying to run a business. Yeah, it's important to keep yourself busy. So, you, so, so if people come down there, Darren, they can they can literally come and train with you, can they, if, uh, if they want to Yeah, they yeah, so I, I, I'm sort of limited to what I can do now because I'm all over the place, mm. quite busy. But, I mean, all the coaches down there are, are, are fantastic. You and know, they've got some good, good ex-pros down there, haven't you? Know, yeah, right? so what it is, you can't just come down in the bag. It's all sort of uh, personal training, but... Uh, we do classes, so you can you know can have up to sixteen in a class. It's, you know, still quite intimate, and you're learning. And we do a gloves on and a gloves off. And sort of the gloves on is is boxing. You're doing circuit training, but it's for everyone. You know, it's not for yeah. real hardcore boxers as such. Or you can, though you can come down. And then we do a gloves off, and it's all the sort of the, the circuit training, strength and fitness and cardio stuff that me and Spencer and all the other fighters would have done. You know, plenty of burpees and. Um, yeah, so good stuff. Us, yeah, yeah, it's just you know, it's good. Yeah, it's good that we do a ring craft for the people, the diehard people that want to learn how to box. So whether you've never boxed before, you can come down and do these ring crafts right. where you know we really break it down and mm. you learn and the sparring sessions or this or that. You know, it's good. We, we're sort of covering all bases and. Listen, what, you know, what a treat, Dan, for anyone listening to this podcast who's obviously like a fan of yours or whatever. Yeah, they can literally go down at 12 Freeze. Well, I look forward and, uh, to getting you both down there. Yeah, we'd love to come yeah, down. Yeah, we can come, come down. Perhaps we can go down and do a little podcast down there. Yeah, That'd be really cool. We've got some ex-champions in there. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. what, we'll do that. We'll get, I'll get all the coaches down there. Loads of, you've had Leon, haven't you? Yeah, Leon's, yeah, Leon's down, down there. Down. Jason's down there. and he. Da- oh, you've got to get Jason Jason Matthews, he's a former world middleweight champion. Jason's crackers, isn't he? Yeah, he's nuts. We got actually, we'll do that. We'll come down and do it. We'll do a podcast. Oh, that sounds great. Twelve times freezing. That'll be that'll be mental. But yeah, yeah any, laughing, anyone listening wants to get down there, you're going to get some great training. All gate, all Paddington, twelve times free. Mister Barker oh, awesome. was in the house, so awesome. yeah, cool. Um, so listen, Darryl, we, we put a little uh, shout out when you were coming on the show just to see if anyone had any questions on Twitter. So if you're right, right. answering a couple of those. The first one is, is not really a question. Right. But, uh, I what thought, are you going to ask? No, no, what this one's nice. It's from Mark McBurney. He said, I've got nothing other to say than thank you for one of the best memories of my life. When you <laughs> beat Gil, you, you woke the whole house up and I've never been happier for someone else when I heard and than you. I paid him to say that. I was going to say, he's got, be, he's, got, he's got to be a family member to bloke, isn't he? It's, got, got it's lovely though, isn't it? When you know you've... Yeah, uh, really nice. You know, it's like the, 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 the feedback I get from that fight, you know, is... I, I like, I, it's overwhelming. It, it really is because, like, I, I, I forget, I forget that there's, there's... Sometimes you forget that there's supporters and fans, and, you know. I did it, I, like I say, I, I did it for one reason, one reason only. For my brother, he, mm. I forget that so many people were brought in by it. You know, don't get me wrong. The the might of Sky TV built built the fight up with the special they did before the ringside special. It sort of mm. set the tone, and people uh, got to hear about my backstory. So you know, I almost felt like a nation behind me. But you know, oh, when I get I, tweets like that, it, it really means it means a lot to me. Wow. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, like boxing is. I think when there's a memorable fight, yeah, people remember those what? fights so fondly, don't they? They oh. know where they were. They remember who they were well, with. Well, I think with Gil, when he boxed Gil, because everybody knew the story and the Sky mm. had done a big thing on it saying this is Darren's big night and this was his story. Mm. And so he had the whole nation behind him because they were just willing him to win. And then obviously when he's gone over, I was in the studio and I'm like, 
Nah, he's fucked. He's done. He's yeah. not getting up. So like, right. Seven, <laughs> seven, <laughs> yeah, eight, and then he and then he shot, just he springed up, yeah. and I was like, mm. "Well, that's out of character for him. He'd normally swallow mm. it." But <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you try and get me to do tequilas down the pub. I'm like, ah, I love that. <laughs> right, Darren, we have got Mikey is asking, uh, "Do you think Connor Ben can win a world title?" Uh, well, look, he, he's improving. That's the main thing. Look, I, I'm sure there's many out there that didn't think I would win one. Uh, and still probably can't believe it. But, you know, look, it all depends. Uh, one thing you, you can't take away from, well, there's a couple of things. He he is improving, all right? I think, now and again, you get a bogeyman. And I think the, the last opponent, I forget his name, if I'm deadly honest. Um, the Frenchman, have been his. Yeah. yeah I, like, he was just a bit of a nightmare and he, he was a big, strong, mature lad. But you've got to remember, Conor Ben's only... He's only been boxing a little while. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a remarkable story that we'll probably hear about one day. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he's still learning. He's learning on the job, if you like. He's got a great trainer in Tony Sims, the same as mine. And But if, if he wants it, if he wants something that bad, all right, there's no reason why you can't. Because, you know, with the dedication he has, you, you just you just don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people out there now who will be saying, no, I don't think so, I don't think so. But, you know, you, I think you'd be crazy to write him off. And you know mm-hmm. what, he... he He's, he's, a, he's a really nice lad. He's, he's a, he, what I like about him is he's modest and he, he, there's no ego with him. Not when it comes to boxing. You might see him with splashy cars and that on the, on social media. But when it comes to him talking about boxing, he's quite insecure and he, and he, he always asks questions. Mm. You, know, do you, you know, how did you do this? How did I do it? You know, you know, what, do you think I could do Because I got dropped in my, my tenth pro fight the same as he did. And he's asking me questions. Did you still think you could win a world title? Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I'm, I was he's a very like grounded this. kid, isn't he? he is. He's, like, really like, he's always asking stuff. Uh, very modest in there, you know. Mm. And yeah, I'm, I'm, not, like, I, if yeah. I'm deadly honest, I, you know, I kept dreaming I would win a world title, but did I? I, I probably never at that point. Mm. So, you know, I, I try and help him as much as I can. But he, he, honestly, for anyone out there listening that loves to talk about bit, trust me, he's a really, really nice kid, and I wish him all the best. Mm. He's, he's being the like, one we get on to, I think. And I like, yeah, I like the way he fights. So he, wears, he wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't it? Doesn't he? But and, that, that, uh, that's his problem, though, Jake. Mm. He, like, he, he, he does have, his heart is too big. He's got mm. his dad's heart, he's got his dad's mentality. And sometimes, He's a very good boxer when he when he shows it, but he he, he mm. wants to bite down on a gum shield. Got to show a bit more finesse, you think? Yeah. yeah, he's just got to, you know settle down a little bit. And I think the more rounds he does, these ten twelve rounds, they'll suit him more because he'll have to slow down a little bit. Yeah, it was Cedric Payno when he, he had the two fights That's against, him, and, and the Look, first you've fight little, was you've had a little Google. You've had a little Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah but don't know what you're talking about, mate. Don't know what you're talking about. But the first fight he, end of last year at your call, that was a that was a very tough fight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was mm. a tough fight. But, you know, a typical sort of your call mm. fight that, you know, like, it was up and down like yo-yos, mm. wasn't it? it was, uh, it Listen, was just special. quick, just quick. I saw you at your call years ago, Darren. I can't remember who your opponent was. Uh, but you went down in that fight. I think you went down in like... That was it. That's the one I'm talking about. No. That's that's the one. In my 10th pro fight. No, his 10th pro fight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was there that yeah, night. I got, I got dropped by Conroy McIntosh. He dropped me twice. I heavily. was there. I can't even remember it, really. I was there that night, yeah. And then you struggled, but you won it on points at the end. But, um... No, I've done him in the 7th. Oh, did you? I've done I him in the 7th. Oh, it was done, an 8 yeah. rounder. And, um, but it was and what yeah. year was that? That was going that's going back a bit. Oh blimey, what, two thousand? Two thousand three. No, was the first No, no, well, one, I turned pro in two thousand four. I ain't as old as you, mate. I forget because oh, yeah. you look older, I forget. Sorry, mate. Oh, there, a few yeah, years ago though, isn't it? Yeah. I, but, lines everywhere, wrinkles everywhere. I, remember, <laughs> I remember being impressed right, yeah. with you, Darren, that night in terms of you know, he came back and well, yeah, he, he turned to, it around. But um I, all learning I can't fights. Shot. I can't remember the shot. And it, it just shows you there was an instinct in me that helped me get up. Yeah. You know, some have it and some don't, I guess. And I remember the doctor that night, he said, yeah, watch out for this kid, he's going to be world champion one day. Did he say Isn't that? funny. Yeah. Oh. yeah well, that's nice of him. That was nice. He, he, know, he knows his stuff, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think he, if, if he retires shortly after that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Darren. G, <laughs> G. Moore has asked, what were your top three boxers since you started watching boxing? Oh, blimey. Well, number one, definitely. <coughs> right, yeah, well, look, I'll stick you in there as a bonus, all right? Is it, well, I'll put you in there as a bonus. No, right? don't bother. Right, other than you, all right, you're my little, you're, you're basically the toy you get the hatchet meal. You're like my gift, all right? I'll put you in there. But I'll, I'm going to go, my, my favourite ever was Tyson. Yes, all right. My to- Tyson. And then, and then I would say Nigel Ben, all right? I, it's like watching Nigel Ben. And then I want to fling this one in here, right? I'm going to say this because 
I used to love to hate him. And it was Nazim Ahmed. I used to... No, I used that's, to that's, great fight. Listen, he was great, mate. That was fr- that's yeah, three good fighters you picked there. Do you know what I mean? I used to... I feel bad saying it, but I used to, like... I, just, <laughs> I didn't really like him that much. So I used to... I remember watching Barrera fight him and then... Uh, and wanting Brera to beat him, you know, cheering at, shouting at the telly, wanting Brera to beat him. I'm deadly honest. Since, you know, when you grow up and you become a bit more patriotic and that, but if I was to, to watch it now, I'd, I'd be a bit different. Do you I know what? Back- if you, when you look back on his career, right, if you look back, go on YouTube and look at the Z-Man, and look at his career and watch no, how I'm good not. he was. Mate, he was just like another level. He's yeah. like, honestly, I, I, when I look back at some of his fights now, he was off the scale, man. He was brilliant. Yeah, he was. So exciting. And, you mm. know, you have sort of pioneers in sport that, you know, will be remembered forever, and he'll be one of them. You know, yeah. he was a great British fighter. Uh, but yeah, they, they were the free. And all jokes aside, Ben, you would have been there as as an early boxer, like my dad mm. as well. Yeah, my dad course. was um, an ABA champion. He was a, a, a big inspiration to me. You know, yeah, someone sure. that you know I wanted to impress. Mm. Yeah, right. um, I remember. I remember, Ben. You, you, you don't remember it because you're punchy, but I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, remember waiting at the one eight four bus stop of May Lane, and you picked me up and you were a blue escort. Uh, convertible. I do, it's mate. the first time I'd ever been in a convertible car. Oh, it's unbelievable. Wow. You know, another reason thinking, oh, no, I want to do the business. I'm picking up chicken down the gym. Oh, Never mind that, he's still driving it, car. Darren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just had the rust holes filled in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. listen, listen, there's one more for you, mate. Aaron Smith Holding says, what was your toughest fight of your career? Oh, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to say the world title. Cause mm. I, I was so nervous before that fight as well, right? Because I thought if I lose this, this is it. I'm jacking it in, I, you know. It's my last crack here, so there's a lot of pressure I put on myself. So, and it was a tough fight. I mean, I've had loads, um, mm. even in the amateurs. You know, yeah. you have our, you know, four rounders, three rounders. You know, I fought uh, Andre Berto, Timothy Bradley. You know, all of them was they were tough fights. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I would have to say guilt. Actually, I, when I fought. When I won a European at Ali Paddy, that was a tough one because I was underestimated this French Yeah, I was there. That was a tough uh, night, that was. Uh, Mamoun and, you know, I blitzed him for six and I got battered for six. It was like, I just, I ran out of gas because uh, uh, of injuries and that. I wasn't able to do my running. That was a tough one. Mm. Uh, yeah, probably the Guild fight. Probably the Guild fight. Oh, cool. Well, listen, mate, before we let you go, we've been doing a what? question. We do a question at the end of it. Last series was who was who, who won out of Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, but we're done with that now. That's all oh, been oh, done. Oh, I'm going to say Tyson, but yeah, I had yeah, the other day with Colin Hart and talk, talk sports. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I mean. It's old news, so that's why you're talking about it now with Colin. <laughs> we've done all that. So we've moved on. So our new one, mate, is what is the king of nuts? What's your favourite nut? King of nuts? What's your favourite nut? Is it a chestnut? Nut. Is it a walnut? No, 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 is no. It... Right, so, hold on, hold on. I, I, I like... Pistachio? No. Cashew? Oh, there's too much egg. There's Pe- too much egg. Peanut? I like... Uh, no, shut up, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a dry roasted nut. <laughs> but yeah, but that's a I peanut. Like... Can you not get dry roasted cashew nuts? Because for that, yeah, you can. Uh, uh, dry dry it, roasted cashew. I've, I've never seen can. a dry roasted cashew. I've seen a honey but, nut. My wife sat next to me. She just said, "Honey, what's you like?" Yeah. Honey, honey, roasted cashews. Yeah, she's the right? same as me. Honey, roasted cashews. Yeah. Spencer's the same. So if I could have a dry roasted cashew, that would be my king. Well, is that no. better, better so than a pistachio? It's so better than a pistachio, then, is it? No, it's too much ag. <laughs> you know, I don't want to have to be working for my nut. <laughs> I don't want to have to be shelling a nut. I'm what about a nut. Chocolate, chocolate-covered uh, Brazil nut? Oh, that's an interesting but one. I, no, ain't bad, yeah. yeah. Bit, bit, bit much, isn't they? Can only, <laughs> can only a triple B, baby belly barker. I can't get through this down there. Baby belly barker. <laughs> triple B. I, I, I'm a fan, honestly, triple B, yeah. I, I'm a fan of a dry roasted nut because what it does is it makes me thirsty, therefore I can have more beer. <laughs> that sounds about right. So is that a peanut? Are we going for a peanut or a dry roasted well, cashew like, nut? Can I, can I, can I have a like a fantasy? We just nut? want a definitive <laughs> answer on this. Well, I want a fantasy nut. I want a fantasy nut. I want a, I want a cashew, a dry roasted cashew. I've never seen a dry roasted cashew. Don't, don't know if they do them. Hold on, Perhaps. Google it now. You, I want to get it out because if there is, I want to buy. A yeah, but you ain't had one, so you don't know what they're like. Well, let's pretend I've had one. Oh, I've had one actually. <laughs> I remember. Sorry, I've had one. Have you Googled it? Are, are there dry roasted cashews? No, I haven't. But look, what? Oh, I'm, I'm having it. <laughs> put it down. You're going for a cashew nut. Right, we'll put you down for the cashew but nut. But it has, to be, it has to be a dry roasted cashew nut. All right, we'll put you down for the dry roasted cashew nut. 
I'll put you down as a bonus, one of my favourite bonus boxers. You can put me down as a I'll dry roast. I've done it. I've just right. told you. I've done it. Keep on about it. I've done it already. There we go. Dry roasted <laughs> cashew nut. <laughs> oh, mate. Brilliant. Listen, down. Listen, it's been brilliant, mate. It's been fun <laughs> having nice you fun, on. Um, Thanks very much, lad. Thanks really, for really me. appreciate you, mate. Love to little baby Poppy and uh, love to Beth as well. Yeah, nice, yeah I'll right. second that. And uh, yeah, get thanks for coming on, Dan. Yeah, listen, let's sort that out. We'll do that before Christmas, shall we? We'll come down. We've got a lot of Yeah, we'll do a podcast down there. It'll be brilliant fun. All right, sweet. You're more than welcome. All right, Brilliant. cheers, Dal. My name, go, All right, God bless you, cheers, mate. Thanks so much. Bye, 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 bye. Lovely stuff. And thanks again to Darren for coming on the show. Now we go to our boxing man in the know, Mr. Coogan Cassius. Coogan! What's happening, Coogie? Oh, I need to pick it up. <laughs> What's the matter I'm with you? Shattered. Pick what up? Are oh, you shattered? Yeah, yeah. You long weekend. You up in Birmingham, weren't you? Yeah, I was up in Birmingham. I got back yesterday and then this morning... Seven o'clock in the morning, I was up to Bolton, and I've been up there since Khan. Oh, of course. I saw your yeah. interview with him. Yeah, Sin, yeah, Khan, Sin, Peter Fury, Sin, Fury, Fury. Yeah. Sound like and, we just uh, woke you up, mate. Oh, mate, I've been watching the Luther on the way home. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Listen, tell us, talk to us about Saturday night, mate. What did you think of the Amir Khan fight? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think a little people are being a little bit too harsh uh, on Amir in that fight. Look, Vargas I'm with you on that, by the way. I agree, totally agree yeah. with you on it. Vargas is tough, and look, he dropped Vargas early twice, and he got nailed himself at the end of the second round. Mm. And then that kind of really gave us that little bit of a question whether it would happen again in the fight. I think Amir was comfortable enough during the fight, but because he'd been dropped early in the fight, you felt that if it, it happened once, it could have happened again. Mm. But he kind of had the luck on the round kind of ending when he got dropped, and he was comfortable after that. It was a little bit of the well, old Amir Khan. He um, got rocked again in the 10th round quite badly, but that was right on the bell as well, wasn't it? Yeah, but for the majority of the fight, I thought, you know, he was, you know, he boxed, he boxed well, and like I said, it was glimpses of the old Amir Khan, that quick hand movement, uh, hasn't lost any of his speed because at moments, and we, mm. you know, we saw that kind of in and out combinations he loves to put, put on, and look, it was, he's, Regardless of what people say, he's been out of the ring for two, two and a half years. He's mm. had 39 seconds against Le Greco last time out. Mm. This is really his comeback mm. fight, if you like. So, look, job done. You know, move on to, to whatever else. Do you know what my big concern was with, with Amir Khan? Because I'm with you, Cook. I think that, you know, you've got to give him a chance. He's only had a few seconds in the ring in the last couple of years. and It was a tough opponent. Um, Samuel Vargas and and he picked himself off the floor done well boxed well my big concern with Amir Khan and this has been a career long concern by the way as well he's just so susceptible to getting hit with a right hand there's no head movement there at all and I think that's why he comes unstuck against the top guns like because he only ever if you look at his career he's been phenomenal like he's, he's moved moved through the weight divisions he's only ever lost to the top guys but I think that's always been the problem that there's just it's just that lack of head movement from him. And he gets caught with that mm. right hand and he was getting caught repeatedly on Saturday with that right then, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, look, what we're going to probably, if people do understand this, but it needs to be pointed out, that Amir Khan's in the last, you know, two, two maybe three fights of his career. Mm. He, however Amir Khan fights, he's not, he's not going to change dramatically. Yeah, sure. You know, obviously, Joe Goosen, you know, he's training with now, Yes, they're going to work on tightening up defence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's part of the reason why we like to watch Amir Khan because you know uh, it's exciting to watch. But at the same time, we saw in that second round that that, that can happen. But mm. it's too late now for for him to kind of develop into you know a, a different style or or anything else. Like I said, it'd be nice to see him tighten up a little bit more defensively. But you know, I think he you know I caught a clip of him talking to Barry Hearn after the fight and. I think Barry Hearn said to him, you know, you can't change now, mate. You know, it's like, yeah. this is only a calm. Yeah. So it, it makes it quite watchable for us, but then we're kind of on the edge of our seats because, mm. you know, like what happened in the second round, it kind of come out of nowhere. And we were wondering for the rest of the fight, is it going to happen again? Mm. But that's, that's the exciting that's, thing about yeah. Khan, though, isn't it? That he is that because yeah. he fights with his heart on his sleeve, um, I think that makes him so exciting. Now, I heard that Sky got all-time figures on that fight, didn't they? On viewing yeah, figures. Yeah, for, for a subscription channel, I think it was the best ever numbers non-pay-per-view. So, wow. you know, wow. listen, it's a big Khan, draw, isn't he, Khan? Massive. Yeah, Khan's always been a draw. You know, it has been a draw. And I think, obviously, 
Sky spent quite a lot of time without Khan, you know, on the network. And, you know, since he's kind of back now, um, yeah, that kind of shows. Mm-hmm. But, look, you know, I spoke to him today and we listened to his reasons why he wants the Manny Pacquiao fight ahead of, ahead of Kelbrook, right? What are those reasons? Uh, just... Well, he just, he says that, you know, he, he believes, I think he, what he believes is that the Kelbrook fight will still be there. We don't know how long Manny Pacquiao's got left in the sport. If there's a chance that he can fight him and then fight Kelbrook, then that's what he's going to do. So it, it may sound like, you know, people kind of saying, well, obviously he doesn't want to fight Kelbrook. Um, but I don't know, maybe... maybe I disagree just... with that because I think that they're all at that stage in their career, all of them. So I think that if he doesn't take the calm fight right now, um, the Brook fight right now, I don't think that fight's going to happen. The reason being... I think they're all in the, the penultimate part of their career where I think they've all only got one or two fights yeah, left. Ed, Eddie Hearn said exactly the same thing in the ring, didn't he? He said if it doesn't mm-hmm. happen next fight, he doesn't see it happening. Yeah, no, I, he, I, he, he, I, I agree with both that. Those guys, so. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree. I think mm-hmm. if it's not the next fight, then it's very, very unlikely would you, to would you think, does it? Do you think it sounds like Khan's avoiding him? Because I've got to ask that for, question for, because... For me, 100%. A lot of people, 100%. Lot of right. people have for said me, that. For okay. me, 100%. This is, look, this is the only way I can look at this, look, look at this fight. Is Amir Khan, right, judging on who Amir Khan's been in the ring with in his career, is he scared to fight Kell Brook? No. In my opinion, no. At this point in his career, I think... No, no, just, maybe but, disagree. I think the problem but, might be it's because it's another British guy. And that's my true feeling on it. Because he doesn't want to lose that... Mm. that that no, no, thing I just, that he's I built... Think, like, I think he knows you know he's what? vulnerable. I think Kell Brook... I think yeah. Kell Brook uh, you know what? does it's him at not, the It's not just about it being any other British guy it's about it being Kell Brook mm. and I think look if Khan couldn't be Pacquiao right to Khan's career it's I'm not saying it's the end of the world because he obviously want to be Pacquiao and you know, if he's only got two or three fights left if we're to assume then you know but I think Eddie said this a long time ago you know it's not he thinks he's going to get beat to Kell Brook I think it may have something to do with the fear of being beaten by Kelbrook because that kind of thing, you know, I think a loss to Brook is like... Undoes you know, his legacy a little bit. Yeah, because he's, he's been talked about for so long. And I'm not saying he's scared or he fears Kelbrook, but I think Eddie Hearn said it ages ago, like probably about two or three years ago, he believed that it was kind of maybe the fear of losing as opposed to the fear of, of Kelbrook. And I'm not, listen, I don't know if that's the case or not. I just think that the bottom line is, we want to see it. You know, he asked me, he said to me, what do you think? I said, if, the, if you did a poll, who wins the poll, Pacquiao or, or Brook? And he made an interesting response to this because he said to me, in the UK, if you did it amongst UK fans, it would be Kell Brook. If you did it across the world, it would probably be Pacquiao because Pacquiao is the bigger name. So I get where he's coming from with that, but... He's a UK fighter. His rival's been Kell Brook for God knows how many years. At least five like or six five, years, yeah. At least five years. It should have happened by now. So as a fan, I want to see that fight ahead of the Pacquiao fight. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to see the Pacquiao fight. Of course, Karen Pacquiao. Of course, or Brook Pacquiao. But as a fan, just as a fan point of view, that kind of has followed their careers... I want to see that fire. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm it's surprising saying. to me that Khan uh, wasn't talking. That didn't you know? The per- it was a perfect opportunity Saturday, wasn't it? You know, Kelbrook was there ringside, and I think it was a perfect opportunity after that fight for for, for them to build that fight. Yeah, you know? Kel Kel wants it massively. He's pu- he spoke publicly about that. Yeah. It's Khan that's the problem in 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 this of making this fight happen. Yeah, the fact that he's talking about Pacquiao straight after, and, and you know, Kel, yeah. Kel sitting but there I'd, to me, it's uh, he's boy, dodging. I'd, it. I'd, you know, I no, listen, I I don't believe that he's like, you know, he's fighting to fight Kelbrook or or you know, or he doesn't believe he can beat Kelbrook. I don't I don't believe look at Amir Khan throughout his career and he's gone on, you know, listen, he was close to the Mayweather fight, you know, three years ago. Mm. He was very close to that Mayweather fight. And, you know, Mayweather even put a poll out at the time saying who should buy the next opponent be. Uh, I think it was Marcos Maidana, Khan, maybe someone else. And Khan won that poll because uh, people wanted to kind of see that fight. And that fight, I believe, was at, at one point very close. He, he's not frightened as he's scared to go in there, but maybe with a couple of fights left, looking at his legacy, I don't know, maybe, mm. you know, 
who does want to kind of cement it by beating Pacquiao. I don't know. Listen, mm. it's, it's very hard to read them here at times um, with certain things. But Do you think he would beat Pacquiao right now? I think he's got a very good chance of being Pacquiao now. Yeah, I do. Um, what about Khan Brook, um, Coogan? Who would win that? Well, at, I'm not going to answer that. No. I'm not going to answer that point mm-hmm. blank out mm-hmm. because uh, of conversations we've had previously mm-hmm. about <laughs> Colin and Brits fight. But I'll be honest with you, it's more evenly matched now than it ever was. I agree with you that. Know, mm. I, I, especially if they go to one four seven, I think I think that benefits. Khan I think it favours Khan big time. Mm. Yeah, if they go one four seven, you have to say at one four seven because. Don't get me wrong, Kel Brock can still make 147. How easy he makes it, I don't know. Mm. But he can still make 147. I've got no doubt about that. And then obviously, this is the weight that the fight's been talked about. So I suppose Khan at that weight would be the favourite, yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. But it, it's more evenly matched now, you know, because this fight was being talked about before Kel Brook had lost to um, El Spence uh, and Golovkin, mm. you know. And I just think. It is more, like I said, they're at that stage of their career now where it's, it's going in very even. Like You wouldn't be surprised if anyone, either of those two come out on top. And that's when you know that it's, it's more evenly matched now. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I hope Eddie... Listen, if anyone can make this fight happen with these two, especially under the same promotional outfit now, mm. it is hard. Mm. You know, but they're going to have a sit-down soon uh, by what Colin's saying. And... Eddie of doing sausage, but kind of convincing, hopefully, why he should take that fight. And what's the, what's the time scale of that, Coogan? They'd, they'd want that ideally before Christmas, wouldn't they? Yeah, Carl's saying he'd like to fight uh, in December. You know, we're sort of fighting in part of September now. So, you know, 10, 11 week camp or whatever. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, that's when, that's when I think Carl, because I was thinking to myself, because Carl's gone 12 rounds, does he now look to fight at the kind of start of 2019. But I think he's open to, you know, if, if there's a date there, kind of mid to late December, then, you know, that that, that would be the issue. But mm. the, the issue now at the moment is that Khan is chasing the Pacquiao fight and Brook is chasing Khan. And it's like a, a freeway going on here. They're yeah. all like chasing each other. Then Brook saying the other day, you know, why does he deserve the fight? You know, I deserve the fight with, with Pacquiao. You know? Yeah, I think he's let, got a good, I, I, good let's case. Let's hope that Eddie sits down, gets his wallet out and makes that fight happen. Because <laughs> that's what we need. We need we need old fast cars to pull the pound notes out and I think if the fight can happen. If, 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 if anyone can do it, I suppose Harold can do it. But, yeah. no, I, like I said to you, I know a lot of people saying, oh, I can't stuck him. But, look, at this level, I don't fight, you know, it's got to make, listen, a whether they say it's about money or not, it's got to make financial sense for them. Mm. And when you're talking about a couple of fights left for them, then they've got to pick and choose carefully. You know about, what? Yeah. You know. I think it's the whole legacy thing for me because I think you're always remembered for your last fight. And yeah, Khan's had an amazing career and everything else, but for him to lose, this is my general feeling on it, mm. thinking this, as an ex-fighter, for him to lose to a fellow Brit, he'll always be remembered for that and it'll sort of damage... The legacy that he's built up because he's done, he's been incredible, Khan. And like, love him or hate him, people watch him. Yeah, but I, think, he, I like, think if you're right, Spencer, and that is in the forefront of his mind, then he can never fight him. Because I think if, well, you, go, if you go into a fight worried about yeah. losing to well, that extent that you're worried about your legacy, then you're not no, going to go into a fight. Well, that's kind of fight might not happen. Well, I think that's what I think. Yeah. If, I think if you're right, and I'm not sure if you are right, but I think if you are right, the fight will I'm not happen. sure that I'm right, but that's just my no, general not, feeling. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Listen, I'm, I'm just to this one, but I'm not sure that that's the case, but, but you could argue there's a case for that. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that's the case either, Coogan. There's a difference, but there is a difference between, like I said, ducking and being scared of a fighter, but then, but there's also the fear of losing to that yeah, fighter. Sure. There is, there's a massive difference. I'm not mm. saying Khan has that. Let me just put it. I'm not saying Listen, he has I'm, that. I'm not saying could, Khan's a bottle know. job because if you look through his career, he's boxed everyone no, he's, and anyone. I'm anyone. just saying it's this fight, and I think yeah. it's all about legacy for me. That's that's my general yeah. Yeah, general yeah, it's feeling. A, it's, it's a good point. Yeah, it will be. Uh, yeah, we will we'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks, Coogan. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. But yeah, obviously it was a, another great night of boxing up in Birmingham. Uh, huge upset on the card, wasn't there? Sam Eggington losing to Hassan Makinwo. The 23 year old Tanzanian. He was given one week's notice for this fight. Uh, what happened there, mate? Well, listen, it was it was really painful to watch. You know, I was talking to Sam Eggins in the hospital before the fight. And it, the problem was as well, they had this Brandon Rios fight hanging, hanging over their heads as well. Yeah, he was going to fight on the AJ undercard, wasn't That's it? That's a bad thing undercard. thinking about a fight ahead, though, man. I think that, that might have been the problem, you know. 
it, listen, it may have had something to do with it, but they were reluctant to talk about it. When I say they, I mean, you know, John Pegg, Sam Eggleston, and also uh, Eddie Hearn. They were kind of reluctant. When I asked them about it, they didn't really want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they knew they had a tough fight coming up, and they wanted to get this out of the way, and then they could obviously got focus on that. This was but, a warm-up fight, wasn't it, in effect, for that yeah, fight? I wouldn't have called this a warm-up fight. I just, I don't really know. I, I think it, I'm not, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't this fight scheduled for 10 rounds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, look, a warm-up fight is what Lewis Whitson had, mm. you know, with an opponent like Lewis Whitson All right. had. I, I, I think the fight, the, the word that we're looking for, it was a ticking over fight. That was ticking what it was. over warm-up. But ticking Lewis, over fight, that's Lewis what it was meant to have been. Lewis was in a late-rounder, yeah? And this, Lewis Whitson had three rounds. He knows he's got a European title fight coming up in October. That's what I would call just getting him out to get him a couple of rounds in, mm. right? That's that. This wasn't that. And I, I think before this fight, you could kind of see that this wasn't that, isn't it? I mean, do, do, you think was, do you think he was badly picked, the opponent? Do you think they uh, they no, underestimated him? Underestimate him? Po- po- listen, possibly, but you know, po- po- not. I don't think he was. I'm not gonna. Listen, I'm not gonna knock the matchmaking on it because possibly it was a, it was a fight that maybe, like I said, would have been should have been tough, but still. He looked in good shape, the guy, didn't he? Yeah, and, uh, I mean, to come through it. Strong. But, mm. I don't know. Look, listen. In, in hindsight, I think. It's easy to say maybe they shouldn't have had that imp- opponent in when he, like I said, had a fight. Mm. Sam Eggers is well, 24 it, years old. Yeah. 24 yeah. years old. Um, you know, he's been in a lot of hard fights. You know, he's been, and he's in a war every time he's in a fight. Yeah. Like, he, he has brutal fights every time Kogi, he fights. But here's one for you. So, Sam Eggerton, yes, he's 24 years of age, and this has been known in the past as well, by the way. But there on Saturday night, he looked like something was missing. There was something like, he looked. Dare I, say shock. It, dare I say it for a 24 year, old, 24 year old, but he looked past his best. Now, whether he was just having an off night or whether those wars have taken their toll. I don't know. No, I think, to, to, to my mind, he got he got clipped, didn't he? He got banged early. Yeah. And he just, he, 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 just he went getting, into shock. Yeah, he just kept getting banged. He, he, yeah. he sort of was, he seemed to be in Maybe denial. Maybe experience. Denial what was happening. He didn't yeah. change the game plan. And, it's, mm. and, and after that, he had his hands down by his side, his chin out uh, mm. uh, towards him. And he was almost <laughs> egging him on. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. Like, we, you can't fight like that at that level. What? One second, boys. I'm just saying bye to my Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Ah, it's beautiful. Right, one second. One second. He's got a special I'll preview, that Uber driver. I'll give you <laughs> five This week's stars. episode. He, 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 no problem. It's don't come out to win. He's going to run oh, no, bonus, he, he's isn't he? He's holding the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to put it out on his own thing. <laughs> right. Um, no, but you know what? Just going back to Sam Eggington, I was just, like with everyone else, just screaming to put his hands mm, up. And yeah. He fights that way as well. And it's like, you know, it's like, I mean, John Pegg must have been, for the, all the air John Pegg's got left, be mm. pulling it out because it's like, you know, I was going yeah, for him. Yeah, I'm going for him. Because he, he is a fighter. And, uh, wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he, when he fights? And no. I, I, no. Bet, I bet old Barry was gutted. Will he, Barry? Yeah, Barry, Barry was gutted because Barry's kind of taken a shine to the eggs and everybody is. We know he has. Mm. Um, I, don't, I, I, just, I don't know where Sam goes from here, though. This is the thing. It's like, you know, he's, he, he's been one of them fighters and it seems like he's been around for 10 years. Mm. Well, to be fair, I think he deserves to be brought back again. Because I think his value, I've just, uh, like I said, I just not, don't know. Yeah, but not if he fights like that. No, it's, that's uh, what I'm saying, because I don't know, Jake, whether it, that was the signs of somebody. It's been in too of, many wars. It's been in too many wars. I know he's only 24, and it seems yeah. Yeah, crazy he's talking about that. Career, he's, he's been in some career. fucking tough fights, hasn't he? Yeah. He's been in some violence. Yeah, some wars. Yeah. And it's great for us to watch, but it does, I mean, you don't expect it to take its toll mm-hmm. after 24 years old, but like I said, it feels like he's been around on the center for a lot longer. If someone yeah, said sure. that, Eggington was twenty nine thirty. You wouldn't, you wouldn't argue against them unless you knew, like said you knew his age. But yeah. absolutely, uh, he's an absolute diamond kid he is, mm. and John Pegg as well. And they they knew, like I said, they had this fight in the pipeline with Brandon Rios was just about to be announced. Yeah. Had he come through that? And, shame, man. It's a shame. Be. shame. I'm a massive it's Eggington not. fan, fan Coogan, and yeah, uh, yeah hopefully this is just a blip. He'll come yeah. back. He'll come back. Yeah. But listen, you mentioned his name earlier, Lewis Ritson, coming through against Oscar Amador. As you say, just a ticking over fight. He faces now Francesco Petera uh, for the European title on 13th of October. Um, how do you think he'll get on with that? Well, Petera's never been stopped. Petera's never even hit the canvas. 
No, Lewis Richards has been going for everyone, like, you know. Mm. A steam train. A steam train. Let's say a steam train. Yeah, he seems uh, to have did... come out of nowhere, Richard, didn't he? He's going to take some beating. I'm going to put my neck on the line and say that he kid is going to win a world solid, title. He? Very solid. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going to win a world title. He's, um, like I said, he's only been on the scene as really to people's kind of to the wider audience when he beat Robbie Barrett for the mm. British title, who had beaten Scott Cardall previously to that. And then obviously he went on a, a free run demolition job of like, you know, Cardall, Highland, and, and Murray. And yeah, he's got a chance for the European title. But on, but, Again, I think they're kind of preparing this for the for the full distance. This guy hasn't been stopped or hasn't even gone down. So yeah, let's see. You know, let's see. I'm not listen. There's going to be bigger fish for Lewis Ritson to fry. We know that, but you know, let let him sort of. He's still learning, and he's still a bit raw. Lewis Ritson. You know, he's still. You can see he's not the finished article. You know, God help people when he's the finished article because he looks you know an absolute killer at the minute. So yeah, yeah. Well, listen, um, over in the States, I've got to mention this fight just quickly. Um, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, cracking fight. Went right down to the wire. Um, I thought um, Porter done enough just on work rate. The first half didn't really catch a light, but the second half of the contest, mate, was unreal, wasn't it? They just went hell for leather. And uh, what a win for Sean Porter. Yeah, great win for Sean Porter. And, you know, I know they're talking about Spence and, and Porter now uh, possibly fighting. Mm. Um, yeah, listen, that division is absolutely alive, you yeah. know, especially like, you know, with, you know, we, we've got fighters over here and obviously over there, it's, but it's, it's a, such a strong division. Yeah. Terrence and Crawford. I, yeah. Well, I picked, I think we spoke about this before. I mean, I picked Garcia for this, um, but you know, Paul, Paul is one of them that's kind of like, you know, there was a lot of talk about him before the Kell Brook fight a few years ago and then obviously he lost that, but then he's come on strong again mm. and he's, you know, he's back amongst kind of the elite Sean Porter now. So, um, yeah, it was, listen, it was a great fight. Like you said, second half was obviously picked up a yeah. little bit more, but yeah, I mean, I mean, Garcia was talking about, Amir Khan was talking about Garcia because obviously he's faced him a few years ago and lost to him. Yeah. yeah. And that was a fight that was being, an option that was being talked about, but, no, uh, but that, the, the division is absolutely lit. So yeah, flying at the moment, flying. Uh, listen, uh, Coogan can't let you go without uh, just mentioning Matchroom signing uh, Uzik this week. What a bombshell that Massive was! Massive news. Did yeah. you know? Did, did, did you know anything about that before that uh, was was announced? Yeah, I knew, I knew for a few days, mm. but I have a sauce, <laughs> and I Got can't tomato, tomato sauce. sauce. Yeah, just call it tomato <laughs> sauce. So. I couldn't even bring it up in an interview with Eddie Hearn because I knew I know he wouldn't. Well, we had Eddie on last week, didn't he? And he, and he didn't mention it. He, he didn't mention no, anything. We talked about it, it as well, didn't we? We talked about it. And he didn't mm. mention anything. And it was fucking announced the next day. It was like, <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Not, not, listen, not not long. I'm talking probably about three or four days sure. uh, before. And and I actually interviewed Johnny Nelson before, and I was trying to hint it out to Johnny Nelson without actually saying his name. Mm. Uh, it, before, but yeah, listen, it's a what a signing pound for pound yeah, in the brilliant. top top three or four in the world. Some people say he's pound for pound number one, but this is bring the Bellew fight close. I think the Bellew fight was going to happen anyway, yeah. Uh, depending on what happens with this WBA situation, obviously, with the mandatory with Lebedev, that's got to be sorted out. But from what Eddie's saying, he's hopeful that can still be sorted out where mm. you know they have this fight first and. Nice. Yeah, with Usyk, so can't wait for that yeah, fight. Brilliant man, can't wait either. And Eddie's already told their team that if Bellew fights Usyk, he'll be you know jumping up and down on Bellew's behalf to be warned. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. both his fighters, but obviously his connections with Bellew. So yeah, he's good mates with Bellew. Really. He was talking about that on on the show last week. He was saying like there's more than being his his boxing promoter. He's actually really good friends with him. Yeah, and especially this is going to be Bellew's last fight. You know, mm. Bellew's last fight. And, you know, like, we spoke about this before. Do your back against Tony Bellew. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I've done that before and I'm no, not doing I'm it not again. I've done that either. before, mate. I end up with egg on my face. I'm not doing it again. Uh, I told yeah, Tony no, enough. No, I think Uzik is a, is a different, dangerous opponent. I can't and, bet uh, against him, mate. I can't. That's why the fight's so fascinating. Yeah. You know what, it, it, what Eddie Owens looking forward to, if Bellew beats Usyk, then... A few people are going to be sick that Tony Bellew will 
will slip into the pound for pound list. So, yeah. you know, it is, yeah, isn't it? Crazy, it's crazy. It's crazy what, what an achievement that would be, wouldn't it? If he picks up all the cruiserweight belts, mm. uh, what an, I, if that is his last fight. What a thing news. to leave the sport on yeah, as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. 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 What a thing to leave the yeah. sport on. Like, mm. And yeah. if there's anybody you'd want to do that, it's Tony Bellew, because he is one of the genuinely nicest best guys in the sport. In boxing. Yeah, one absolutely. Best people in boxing, without absolutely. a doubt. All right, mate. Well, brilliant. Look, thanks for all that, Coogie. Um, I know you. I know you've been mad busy all over the place, and um, appreciate your insight, mate. And look forward to getting you on again next week. Yeah, next week. Obviously, we've got the build up towards the AJ fight, uh, Wembley. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll get the inside track. For yeah, that. we've got Canelo and Golovkin this week as well. Yeah, so, we can talk yeah, about we'll, that next week. Looking forward we'll to that one. More about that. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. What's your feelings on that? How's that going to go? Do you think? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Golovkin. I think now. I was umming and ahhing over it, mm. um, going back and forth. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Golovkin. I went Canelo last time. I'm mm. gonna go with Golovkin this time. Um, yeah, look. Do you know what the mad thing is? I went Golovkin last time, and now I'm going Canelo. It's bad. Do you bet? Do you yeah, bet <laughs> no, I don't want to bet because I, look, it is one of those. I know. No, I'm with the, you. I know they're yeah, sitting on the G. fence, but Triple G, I was with Triple G big time, and I thought he won Fair, a fight. Talk about twenty quid, mate. Twenty uh, quid. No, because I fancy Triple G now. I've got. I've changed my mind yeah, again. I, th- I, th- I feel like it'd just be a moral victory, you know. I think all the Canelo stuff. I wouldn't bet against Triple G. Me, you know the, the you know the the drug stuff. I, I just think you know. I think for you know, it's it's morally right, trying, and if Triple G wins that, I think. yeah, he's just trying to get money off me. That's all he's doing. Well, you lend me a score, won't you? <laughs> You're the man with all the money. Don't know where that's from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting rumours like everyone else. I ain't got no ribbon. Oh, mate, there's rumours circulating, Listen, mate. The mate, Coogie them, Bears rolling in cash. Them trains to Bolton and back, they ain't cheap. Nah. Especially in that old standing well, class. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, mate. Listen, but it's been fun as always, Coog, and I um, look forward to speaking to you again next week, mate. No worries. Yeah, God, God bless you, mate. Cheers, Cheers Coogie. Yeah, Bye, bye, mate. Bye, bye, bye. Brilliant. Wasn't it? All good. Yeah. I, I love having Coogan on the show. He just, uh, he's just such, so knowledgeable, isn't he? And, he's, uh, he's, he's just everywhere, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's so knowledgeable. And you know what? He's taking it to a different level for us because now we're on YouTube as well, on iFilm London, um, iFilm TV on mm. YouTube. And yeah, the, the listeners have gone through the roof. And yeah, he's good value, mate. He know, He's got the insight to everything. He's travelling everywhere, everywhere. I think we woke him up, by the way. Sounds like, sleepy. I think he's had a long couple of yeah. or a long week. Yeah, and then he said, uh, and we spoke to him quickly after the interview, didn't we? He's up to Sheffield for a media mm. day with AJ on Wednesday. He's he just don't stop, doesn't he? Nah. And then he's off to Jeddah next week for the uh, for the Grove Super Series final. Final, yeah. Busy, busy boy, but so, um, exciting. But, yeah, uh, but yeah, you could hear it in his voice sounding like it. Yeah. But he's good, man. He's really good value. Good. Brilliant get some stuff. rest tomorrow, yeah, before you uh, before you get up to Sheffield. Um, yeah. An exciting week next week. Uh, it's the build-up to the AJ fight. It is the build-up to listen, the AJ fight. Now, we, Are you going that night? I'm going, yeah. You're going, yeah? Yeah. Are you going? Um, I don't think so. No? No. I don't think so. I'm doing something. I can't remember what I'm doing. I'm, doing I'm, I'm going. I'm there. Oh, I'm going to be watching it. I'm in the Royal Box. <laughs> the Royal I am. Box. Are you? I'm in the Royal Box. <laughs> yeah. 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 Matt Trump put me in there. In the box? The royal box? The royal box. Give me a shit seat, man. What are you talking nah, about? No, man, I'm out there with like, food, drink. Yeah, I'm, bring your fucking I'm binoculars. I'm royalty, mate. Bring I'm your in, binoculars. Nah, man, huh? I'm in the big screen in the royal box. Might as well be at home watching it on TV. Nah. I've got a royal box at home. I'm Call in the, the royal sofa. box. I'm in the royal box. That's all I know is royal box. That's all I know. It's going to be fucking two miles away. <laughs> talking about. I'll let you know what it's like. <laughs> Listen, just because it's got the, w- ro- the word royal I, that, that, it, that, don't that, mean it's a fucking better box than I the other I spoke box. to Frank. I said, Frank, I'm coming to the fight. Um, need to right. get the tickets. He went, you're in the royal box. I went, no, you're done. You sold, <laughs> you sold, you <laughs> sold it on off. the royal. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking, Frank, fuck for that. <laughs> don't have to give me the ring uh, Yeah. But yeah, listen, um, I'm just... I'm listen, just I'm genuinely it. excited about that fight. I've had a feeling this week, right? I'm not oh. going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's, a, it's... I don't want to... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can actually commit to it. This feeling. Well, don't but, commit just yet. But don't commit no, just I'm yet. No, I'm going to commit to it now. I think Povetkin. Listen, man. Listen. When you break it down. Oh, no, go on, say it. Povetkin is going to clip him. Oh. He's going to fucking clip him. Oh. All right. And then we'll see what happens. I've got to tell you. But I've got to, no, I've got but to tell you. You're right, Spencer. Everything that you've been saying, and Eddie Hearn fucking agreed with you last mm. week. 
This is a banana skin. It is. And I've, I've got to tell you, it, it's not just myself, you, Eddie, Darren Barker. Who, who's on earlier. Everyone you speak to goes, oh, Ooh. fucking, this is yeah, dangerous. Right. Yeah. Forget Klitschko, who was at the end of his career and yeah, everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy I think this is, could be his hardest contest. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. I think this is Joshua's sternest test yeah, of the day. Right and it's funny as well, because, yeah, obviously, I, I talk to a lot of people about uh, about boxing. They know mm. that I'm interested in it. Yeah, they don't see the, you know, most people that I talk to about this fight, they don't see the, the mm. danger of it. Nah. But, but Povetkin's fucking world he's class. Yeah. He's Olymp a dangerous Listen, fucking dude, Olympic gold medalist, only ever lost to Klitschko. Give Klitschko a hard fight, by the way. Yeah. And that was a couple of years before. Yeah. Like he still had, you know, Klitschko was still firing on all cylinders. Yeah, Klitschko was at his, his at peak, peak. Of his power. Yeah. yeah. This guy is a danger. I'm excited. I'm still going with Joshua, but I'm worried. Listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put a name to it just yet, but this yeah. last couple of days I've been thinking about it, trying to break it down. Mm, don't okay, think too no. much because you get scared. <laughs> 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 but listen, we'll get it all uh, next week. Yeah. We've got another... Uh, we might have a guest from the undercard as well. Yes, we, um, we, we're working on... I don't yeah. want to say too much because I don't want to disappoint you. But um, oh, fucking, to be fair, we've been 39 weeks and just pulling out guest after guest. Yeah. All we can guarantee is going to have another blinder on next week. Listen, we're gonna, whatever sure. happens, we'll have another, another yeah. great guest. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, join, yeah. Us, join us definitely next week. Pound for Pound is a Boxing with the Stars limited production. Created by Ross Siegel. Produced by Spencer Oliver, Jake Wood, Ross Siegel and Alex Siegel. Music by Keith Atek. Graphics by Lolly Edwards. Uh, this podcast is hosted by Audio Boom and edited by Zach Brown. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Pound Podcast. Oh, and final thing, we got a mass we've still got this massive fucking announcement to make. Can we do it yet? Um, no, we're doing it really soon. I think okay. maybe, I think I think we can talk about it from uh twenty fourth of September, I think, I was told. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. I think they want to announce it then. But it's, I'm buzzing about that. It's big. <laughs> it's big and listen hopefully it's something that, that you guys will be able to enjoy yeah. and join us on yeah join yeah. us on it doesn't matter where you are in the country leave it there <laughs> <laughs> brilliant thanks for listening and we'll see you next week